Okay. How many of you could do the questions from the last exercise L05? Anyone would like to say something? Did no one try it or it didn't work out? Are you guys able to hear me? Yes, sir. So could you do any exercises? You know, I gave L05, lecture five, last lecture. Sir, didn't try. Didn't try. Anybody else who tried? So I tried the Pythagoras theorem, but you know it was wrong. I could not go after that. Mm -hmm. Okay. But you know what the question was? I didn't say so I, I said the question was, if my input is 10, then I should be able to print all the numbers like that. Yeah. But you tried, Anuj was, given the number, is it meet Pythagoras theorem? That's a different case. But to iterate over okay. it. When I'm trying okay. to the situation, that's the question I'm asking you. So, sir. Okay. Okay, let's get started. We looked at the functions, but we'll get into the functions into more details. Very good. Any questions so far before I start? So, again, these are normal courses. So, let's look at basically. When you do generally with functions, uh, it's a general background that depending on the programming language, functions are passed differently. One is called call by value, and other is called call by reference. And what we really do is call by value normally means you make a copy of the whatever I'm passing and pass it on. So that the original value never get changed. And call by well reference, I pass the reference or address of the location where my value is stored from the main function. And if I do any change in the function inside, it affects my main variable there. There are the two main methods basically do. Language C always uses call by value. Java basically uses again call by value, but primitive variables. If we're calling an expression, it computes a value and passes on that value, and we'll look at into that mode. So in call by value, when you look at it, typically the case, if you make changes locally, and it does not make an impact on the calling function with the function yeah. being called. And I explain that with an example when I come to those. You can see one, so no. Vedant, you probably can keep up on the mic in silent, you'll probably be better off. I'm getting a lot of echo from there. So let's look at, I mean, call by reference, as I said, you pass the location where my variables or copies are stored and so if i change any changes locally in the function it is impacted on the outside as well they become very abstract so we may not be able to appreciate at this point till i start explaining and going over it then you probably will to understand what do i really mean so let's look at the typical what happens in python so we have two different kind of variables. One is called primitive type, like with integer, floats, which basically single value, and other are complex type, like type like list or dictionary or other items. List we have discussed. We haven't discussed other items. So if it is the simple variables, then it is called by value. The value is made and is passed on. But for anything which is non-primitive, like integer or float, but anything more than that, it is what is called is passed by object reference. Very similar to Java, 
that basically means if we're trying to make a change, it will be impacted in the main part. And when I look at the examples, then we deal with what typically would happen. Essentially, what happens is we make a copy of the reference where things are stored, and I'll again give you the way it works. Then we see how does it really make an impact. You can probably look at, let's say, if it is called by value. So let's say I have variable i, and it is memory it is stored value five, and let's say so my code is i is equal to five. And I call some function where I pass the value i. This is primitive type. My system will make a copy of the value i somewhere in, in the memory and pass on this value to this function where I had done def of f and where I defined that. When I say def f and define. When I done def f function n colon whatever I'm trying to do. So if n happens to be integer, let's say i is equal to 5, and 5 is stored somewhere in memory. So I'll basically make a copy of 5, some other location, and pass on that value to n. So if I make say n is equal to 6 here inside, this original 5 never gets changed, remain the same. But if I'm talking of a reference that basically means let's say look at a list. So my list would be let's say is memory location where I'm having list item one, two, three, let's say four. So this is the whole list. And there's a reference, the location. So what we do is when we pass a list, we make a copy of this reference and pass on that copy. And if somebody, so let's say my def function, and I'm passing L as a list. So now if I say L0 is equal to, let's say, 10, since this is a reference and this reference is up pointing to same location, so L0, which is 1, would also become 10. And that's the meaning of pass by copy of the reference. And we look at when we deal with giving the example from there. To understand if I'm passing a printer like integer, float, that kind, I made a separate copy of the value, pass it on. If I'm parting non primitive type like list or dictionary, something else, then copy of reference is made and both the references point to the same values. If you make change inside, it will get changed and we'll make it more clear once we get into the mode of. But further to re realize, if a object is immutable like a string, and if I pass a string inside the function, and I try to change treat as a list and change the value, it will give you error because list is immutable type, and that cannot be changed. And we get an error, and we look at the examples, then we probably know what that means. But mutable objects like a list can be changed, immutable cannot be changed inside a function, and we'll give you both those examples inside. So let's look at the following code. I'm defining a function called ops. I'm passing in an object. And remember Python, we say variables are dynamically typed. We say variables are sorry. Variables are dynamically typed. That means the type of the variable, whether it is a list or a integer or something is determined when you use it and not simply defining. So what does OPS function do? It's some name I have given, some operation. I want to perform right. some operation. It's a name given. It's a bad okay. name. So I can say list operation because I'm assuming this OBJ is some list variable. So I'm defining okay. a name. So ideally the name should have been, let's say list operation. Right. But I'll give you some name there. Okay. Does that answer? Yeah, I'm yeah, saying yes, I sir. take an object, assume object to be a list, and I'm appending a new element to it. So now remember ob object is a parameter which I passed. This is not a primitive type because this is not a primitive type. 
a reference to whatever object is passed it will be appended there. So look, I defined a list as consisting of three elements, A, B, C. I'm invoking the function OBS and passing, sorry, there's a type error there. This would be list here, OPS list. There's a typo error there. So let me say it should be OPS because nothing is defined list. Now, when this function gets invoked here, it knows OPJ, OBJ, whatever I'm passing a list, reference or list is passed, and I'm saying OBJ dot append. So look my where my list is pointing. If you look at my memory location, somewhere in my memory. This points to basically reference to a list which contains A, B, C. And the moment I say obj dot append new to the list, a new element type called new is added, and my original list gets modified. In second statement, what I'm doing is obj is equal to one two three. Now I am creating obj. The moment I assign something, one two three is basically a new object. So wherever my this obj was pointing to. Now this one, two, three is another location in the memory where my list is maintained and this OBJ points to this. Previously, so far, this OBJ, when they did OBJ dot append, it was OBJ was pointing to here. But the moment I assigned OBJ is one, two, three, one, two, three is a new list and this OBJ now points here. So that means this original OBJ is still written as it is. So when you come out of the function, the list, sorry, again, this would be list, nothing called obj. When you print a list, the list is pointing to the location here. So list would point to a, b, c, comma, new, and list would not point to one, two, three, because the moment I assign it, this OBJ becomes local, point to different location. I remember I said I'm passing a copy. My original value was this pointer, the memory location where it is. The moment I assign this variable location has become this, but original location still remains this, ABC comma new. The other. So let me just show and run the probably code and you probably see what do I mean there. So let's say I define Let's say Python. Can you guys see my screen? Okay. Yes, sir. I said def. Let's say OPS, OPS. I define some object. And I'm saying OBJ append, let's say XYZ or ABC. Now I'm saying OBJ is equal to new list item 1, 2, 3. And I am done. I create my list, my L is equal to, let's say, 10, 20, 30. I call OPS, pass my list object. If I do print MYL, now I pass this 10, 20, 30 to this, append happens. But till this time, OPJ is pointing to same place where my list is storing the value. And the moment I put OBJ123, OBJ is pointing to another location in the memory, but this this append has worked on the reference myl. So if you print, you'll see 10, 20, 30, comma ABC. And that big this happened because my list is immutable, we can always modify. Any questions about this part? Okay, then I'll start getting into more details, giving an example there. So let's come back. Let's look at, I'm passing a string. So look what happens. I defined, a, again, some operation, and assuming it's a string object. Remember, a string is immutable. So if I append, it will give me an error. 
So if I look at, if I define a list as A, B, C, OPS list, append would work fine. But if I put my string, TSC, which is a string, and call this, I'll basically get an error. So let's say, I'll put the same example there. Let me come back. So I already defined OPC object this. Now I'll define, let's say, my str is equal to, let's say, Python. Now it is a string. I can say my str, for accessing it, I get p. It accesses a list, but a string is immutable. You cannot change it. So if I were to call OPS my str, because this my str is immutable as a string, the moment you try to append, you get the error. And this is what you will basically see here. A string has no object attribute append because a string doesn't have you append, and this will work fine. Or even if I were to define another function, let's say modify, and I'm calling some anything there, the list here again, and I say obj1 is equal to, let's say, some new element x return. And I mo call modify my str. I'm trying to do my str is Python. My str1 is y. But I'm trying to call modify. I'm modifying inside with a string which is immutable. This will again give me an error. It does not support item assignment because it is immutable part. So understand what you are doing. If you pass an immutable object and you try to modify it, you'll basically get an error. So don't modify or don't attach uh, any operation to immutable object. So the responsibility of the calling time. What you're trying to do. Append would work fine, modify would work fine with a mutable object like this, but it not it would not work fine for immutable object like this. That's what you need to understand and do that. In Python, everything works like an object. So even to a function, I can pass on another function as an argument. It's a bit more complicated, but sometimes you see that. So let's say I define one function as add two operations a comma b which returns sum of the two values a plus b i define another function multiply returns multiplication of two numbers and i'm defining another function called my operation whose first parameter is a function name function object and it uses two parameters now what i'm doing i'm saying return invoke this function whatever i'm passing with two parameters a and b. So when I call my OPS at 5, comma 10, it will invoke my OPS. So at this time, function becomes at and it becomes 5, comma 10. It calls 5, comma 10, which will return 15. This returns 15. So my OPS would basically give me 15 here. Return value would be 15. So if I were to say x is equal to my OPS at 5 comma 10, x would be 15. And here I say y is equal to my OPS multiply. So now look at this time when I call this function would become mult. And I'm calling mult a comma b, which is 5 comma 10. Mult returns 50 multiply. So y would become 50. And if I Print these values, that's what I'll see. So let me just show you this again with the example there. Let's say define add a comma b return a plus b def mult multiply a comma b return a star b. I'm saying def my OPS function name a comma b. I'm saying whatever function name is, pass on this parameter, I would say return function a comma b, and I'm done. Now I say x is equal to my OPS, let's say add comma 5 comma 10. Now x would be 15. If I were to say y is equal to 
my OPS, let's say multiply on a five comma 10, y would be 50. But if I were to pass something else, that's I call z is equal to my OPS 20 comma 5 comma 10, this will get into an error because it expects runtime this to be a function where I'm passing the integer which is not wrong. And that's the way to appreciate, understand that part. If I define something else, I'll get into the error. Okay. Any questions so far on this part? Sir, so so if you give uh, if you give three numbers, then it'll throw an error because you have only defined for two numbers, right? No. If I give three numbers, the my OPS expect first parameter to be function. Oh, all right, fine. But I'm passing non-function. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me define another function here. Let's say we define new function. Two parameters. Let's say it's one a. I don't do join a comma b. I simply say return 100. Okay. Now if I call z is equal to. Sir, someone's mic is making too much noise. Whose mic it is? I think Shreyas, you have a mic. Can you keep a mic in silent mode? That may be the case. I know your mic. Yeah, now it should be okay. My OPS. I'll call new function, comma, let's say one comma two. Now, if you look at the new function, the sorry, my OPS is I define my OPS to be a function a comma b. So this will call new function a comma b, which is one comma two. Actually, I'm calling new function one comma two, but it's not using a and b, it returns hundred. So z would be hundred. Okay. So when you call this function my OPS, it expects the way I defined it, it expects first parameter to be a function, second to be some value. How this value to be used is up to the function. Does that make it a bit clear? Yes, sir. Any other question? Sir, how, did you get, how did you get 100, sir? Look, this new function is new function. 100. It is not using the two parameter I passed a comma b. When I define a function here, it is my choice to use the values or not. I am not forced to use it. It's a bad implementation. Normally, why should you define a parameter for not using it? This is a bad implementation. But in theory, you can do that. Okay. So, and um, you had given us the defined multiplication formula, right? Right, yeah. Here. Yeah, uh, could we use that instead of my ops? No, no, repeat again. Instead of using the my ops, uh, I can multiplication call directly. I can say multiply 3,5. It will give me 50. That can oh. okay. I can do add 20,50. It will give me 70. Okay. So yes, say if you have to build a calculator, you define all those four or five functions and you say a star key maps to the function multiply. We have a common function that all the thing is the question of mapping. So it's an indirect mapping I'm trying to do. All I want to show is even this is possible. In other languages, this will be a little more complicated. Defining using it in Python becomes easy, but if you do function like this. It could be more complicated and debugging would be tougher. So recommended not to do it, but nobody prevents you to do it. My object to expose you, this can be done. That's what I'm trying to basically do. Okay. Yes, sir. Any other questions? So let's look at when you pass on things. Something a term which is not very well understood, which is called Python as a concept of what we call is local. Another concept called global. And there's a one more term called non-local. 
I'm not going to discuss the non-local today because that will be too complicated. I'll basically discuss local and the global. What does it mean? And that I want to basically say because a lot of time we misunderstand. By default, anything you do in Python, it is local within your content. Within it. So everything is something called a scope. A scope meaning you look at I define my function add. Now this add function has two variables a and b, variable a and variable b. This variable a and b are defined only within the inside the function. These variables are not visible outside the fun function add. That means the scope of the variables a and b is available only within this. You cannot use a and b outside this function, and that's the meaning of the scope. But if I look, if this is my main code, and in the main code, if I write something, let's say what is called p is equal to 100. This is my main code. So this program p is this variable p is available inside my entire code, and I can use it. So p scope is the entire file where I'm defining, but scope of these variables a and b is only inside the function. To so understand the scope, what is scope mean? And when I say by default, the scope is local, that means within my context. So if it is a function, it is local within that. If it is the main code, local within the file, but whatever you do in this file, is not visible in the other file. So local in this. So whenever I define this p is equal to 100, p is local within the file, but within the whole file, anybody can use it. So it's global for any entity inside the file, but for outside this file, it is not visible. The parameters a and b, or even in this function, let's say act, I define something called z is equal to 10. This z is again, defined locally within this function that's why it's called local and what it means to understand the scope if i define something inside a function or somewhere that is local to that function and those variables cannot be used outside but something like this which i can define like i'm saying that that is available even inside so this variable p is global within the file meaning anybody any function within the file could use the variable p, but if I'm using this file somewhere else, then this p is not available. That's the meaning of understanding global versus local. So let me take this code. So I defined a function at, I'm saying, look at x, x is equal to a plus b return x. After the call is made, x is returned, but x is not known to outside. So what is happening? I'm calling y is equal to at 5 comma 7 a becomes 5 so i call this with 5 comma 7 x becomes 12 and i'm returning 12. but the moment my call is over x is no more visible x is gone because x was visible only inside this function so when i say print y it will work fine but when i say print x Main doesn't know because x is not available. X was only inside the function, and hence this print x will give me error. But if I were to do print x inside the function, this will work. Any questions about this part? Because this has to be understood. Then I got into so, some more details. What do you what do you mean print x inside the function? So I let's say modify the code. So my code of, let's say I rewrite the code rather than this, let's say my code is def. Add a comma b colon x is equal to a plus b, I say print x return x 
Is that okay? Yes, sir. So this is visible locally in the function, but this x is visible only in this. The moment I come out of the function, this x is not visible. But the printed x will be there, right? Yeah, so it will print everything. Oh, but if I do right. print x in the main code, this will yeah. give you error. All right. So let me show the example there. Sir, sir. Yeah. So this code will print uh, when when the function is called. Yeah. So it will print x twice. No. Because print is no, no. also it the return x there. here, whatever it is. And since I'm printing y, it will print that value again. Yes. It will print that in the sense twice. Yes. But here yeah. it is x, and here whatever I'm returning the value. If I want to say print y plus one, then it will print x plus one, whatever that value is. So let me say def at a comma b. I say x is equal to a plus b. I say print x. I say return x. My function definition is over. Now I call, let's say, y is equal to add 3 comma 4, y 7, I can say print. You know, why did the 7 got printed? Because of this printer. If I say print y plus 1, it will print a. But if I have to say print x, it will not be printed. Say x does not give you an error. Oh, I have to find x somewhere else. Remember, we had probably x somewhere else here. So it is taking that x, not this x. Just to clarify, let me rewrite this. Back. Sir, why didn't it? Why didn't it print twice? Where is the printing twice? It prints seven. Uh, the print definition is print function is also there. Return is also there. Yeah, return is not printing. Return only returns the value. L okay. Let me define it again. Let's adapt add a comma b. X x uh, I have not defined it. A plus b. Return x x. So now there's an error there because there's no x x d. I'll define it again. Now, add is not printing anything when I say y is equal to add 5 comma 6 is executed and y gets 11. Till I print it, nothing would happen. Okay. But if I were to put a print before return here, then or I can say, I can do a let's say def add. And then I can say print the addition returns xx return x. Now I say y is equal to add, let's say seven comma two. What will get the output? Because of this print you would see the addition returns 9. Okay. But till you use y, do not print anything. Any doubts about this? So yeah, Anuj, you have some question? Yeah, Anuj, what is your question? Could you just explain what local is again? So again, you look at this here. What I've done, I defined a variable xx inside definition of function. So look at this definition. Access is been defined, declared within this body. And that means the xx is local to this function n. This access is not visible. It's something like Let's say your name is Anuj. Everybody knows you Anuj, but inside your parents called you with some other name, some other nickname, let's say Tom or whatever it is. Now, your name which is inside the house is known only inside the house and not known outside the house. 
So your name, Tom, which parents calls you or somebody calls you, is local to within the house, not visible outside the house. Outside the house, whatever your name is, whatever somebody calls you. Okay? So your name outside, because the whole world knows it, that's the way it is. So let me give another, I'll come to another example. But is this definition of local clear? That whatever I define yes, sir, sir. inside a function is visible inside. Tomorrow, let's say your parents, you know, no, we will not call you Tom, we will call you good boy. Your name is good boy, visible inside the house. Nobody knows your name, good boy, outside the house. Somebody calls you who's good boy, sir, nobody is good boy here. But inside the no, house, but why, would they, know good boy. why would they want to have a thing like this that is only visible to the programmer but not to the actual yeah, abiraz repeat the question again i meant uh, why would they want to have something like this like the one you were just explaining with which is only visible to the programmer right it's not visible to the person who is viewing the program the no, final execution no, no, person viewing the program knows the code i'm saying when you execute it yeah okay now let's say i have a lot of parameters i want to do a lot of calculations let's say I want to do and i need a lot of temporary storage to compute my stuff. So I need to define local variables. You really don't want to know how do I do things inside. Okay. okay. So why should you know? You want that when I'm calling an ad, you want that ad should be giving me results of A, A plus B. How does it do? Whether it, so I can do another definition of ad. Let's say def ad. A comma B, I can say for I in range, I can say S is equal to A, then say for I in range B, S is equal to S plus 1, return S. It will give me the same answer. Okay. Got it? Yes, sir. Now, all I care is somebody gave you the function at. Do you really care how does it implement at? Whether it implements like this by incrementing it or by doing a plus operation like this? Whether I use one variable inside as locally or I use 10 variables inside, does it matter to you? You don't really care. You don't want to know. So the internal details. Like your nickname in the house, Papu, Gudu, Tommy, Tiki. We don't want other people to know outside. The name inside are different. You do differently. So names within the scope is what is called local. So S is a local here. Even A is a local here. Is S, A, B are local within this function, not outside. Okay. Okay. If I were to even change something, let me give an example there. Let's look at this definition again. Def at a comma b. I say x x is equal to a plus b, and I say a is equal to ten, b is equal to twenty. Return x. Okay. I change the value of a inside. I change the value of b inside, but that does not mean things get changed outside. So, example, let's say p is equal to three. Q is equal to 4, and I say Y is equal to add P comma Q. What the Y should be? Aviraz? Yes, sir. What should Y it should be? Now? 7. 7. What the value P should be? Should because you are adding three. both. Or because you are adding remain both. 3. So the P will remain 3 itself, sir. Because you have assigned a value to it. See, when I passed, P value was 3, B value was 4. Now say A is 10, B is 20. Yes, sir. Now when I print, I know Y would be 7. But whether it will print 10, it will print 3. Yes, sir. Because you assigned P as 3 before. Yeah, but does, does it get changed here? Because I'm passing it. See, whatever P was, that's becoming A. Now I'm setting A to 10. So does my P become 10? P 
which I couldn't get you. Didn't you just assign a new value to P? P is another variable which you are assigning so a value. P is a three, to. Q is a four. Precisely, yes, I'm calling this function P comma Q. I'm passing the parameter P and Q. So here, A becomes P and B becomes Q. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Now I access is A plus B, which is seven. I say A is ten. At this point, does P become ten? Because A was basically P. No, sir. Yeah, that is the question comes in, which is what we call is local, because this A happens to be local here. Yeah. Mm, okay. So P is outside. It, it remains, and that's my next slide. So A is local. So value would be seven three comma four. So is this local sir. within a function clear? Yes, it is, sir. Let's go to the next slide because I'll have more sir. discussion there. Then get to more clear there. Let me move to the next, then you understand what I'm trying to do there. Okay. Let's look at this code. Sorry. I'll move to the next slide. Now look what I have done. I said x is equal to 10. Now x is a variable which is global. That means this x is available in the entire file. This variable x is available in the entire file. Now I say y is equal to add 5 comma 7. So a becomes 5. And B becomes 7. A and B and 7. And I'm saying X is equal to A plus B. Now I'm defining a X here. And since I'm defining X is still local. Local within this function. This X which I'm defining here is different from this X. Name happens to be the same, but the two are different. Since I'm assigning it. I'm saying it's defining like another variable y, declaring a new variable which is treated scope inside this. So this x remains local. When I return back, it will return me 12, but x would still remain 10. So it will print the answer would be 12 here, and answer would be 10 here. Any questions about this part? No, sir. Krishna, Reyes, any questions? No, sir. No? Okay. One minute. Abraham, mommy could do that. On, karke. on, karke. on. Let's move to next example there. Let's look at this function here. What is that I had done? This is my whole code. I defined x is equal to 10, y is equal to 10. And this is going to be confusing now. What I'm doing, print y. I haven't declared y to be using. I'm just using it. And because this x and y so far are available anywhere in the file. That means y is available to, to this function as well. So it will print 20. Now I'm saying x is equal to a plus b. The moment I'm trying to assign this variable x becomes a local variable. This variable x is different from this variable x. But this y is same as this y. So if I'm not assigning any value, it remains global. I can access it. The moment I assign a value, it becomes a local. So when you add it here, y becomes 5 comma 7. So y would become 12. It will print 12. And when I print x, this x is taken as this x global because this x 
was local. So whatever this, even though it became 12 here, but this X will still remain same as this. So what you get printed is 10 and not 12. It became too messy, so let me clean this up and you can probably understand. Any questions with understanding? I can run it and do that part. So could you just run the program once? Okay. Let me run the program once. It become too much. Let me clean and start from beginning. I say def add a comma b. I say print y x is equal to a plus b return x definition is over in my main code now x is equal to 10 y is equal to 20 i say now y is equal to add let's say 1 comma or i go by this slide 5 comma 7 then i say print y print See what is happening now? This is my definition. I'm saying print y. In the main code, I had defined this. In the main code, this x is global, y is global, and I can be used. And I will say y is equal to add 5, comma 7. So this is my 5. This is my 7. A becomes 5. A becomes 7, print Y. Y hasn't been used locally. Y remains global. It will print 20. Now say X is equal to norm assigning, even though X was global. If I were not to assign, simply print X, it will print X. But simply return X, it will give me 10. But since I'm declaring it and defining it, X becomes a new variable local, whose value becomes A plus B, which is 12 returning 12 so when i say it returns 12 y becomes 12 and print y becomes 12. when i do print x this x is a global in the overall file because i'm just going to access it and then it gets printed 10. are we okay sir so i didn't understand how is y equal to add 5, 5 comma 6. See, this was a variable, so let me probably put into editor and then do that, then you can probably see better. That's the whole purpose of doing this so that you could understand the difference between local and global. Can you see my screen? The program will return. Abraham, yes, is it Yeah, my text pad. Okay. Now see what is happening here. In this whole file, it are highlighted. X is a global, Y is a global. Oh, okay. Now when I say y is equal to add 5 comma 7, add function is called, add function is called, a takes the value 5, b takes the value 7. I'm saying print y, y hasn't been defined inside the function, y has been defined outside, so y is available to every function inside this file, it takes that value, print whatever value of y is, which happens to be 20. And it prints out. Now say x is equal to a plus b. Now x has been declared locally. It becomes a local variable. It takes the value of a and b, which is 5 plus 7. 
which is 12 returns and hence y becomes new value it is as good as saying y is 12 i can reassign the value to a variable they will run good but again if i were to let's say print x and i were to say y is equal to add 100 comma 200 what is the value printed here now at this point in time look at this point in time y becomes 12. when i add returns 12 this 12 get assigned to y y becomes 12. so when i call this function at 100 comma 20 200 i say print y and y at this point before i invoke this function y from here is 12 so it will print 12 and return 300. so if i were to do print y it will print 300. but this invocation because y is a global and value of y is 12 here to print 12 and this print will give me 300. Anuj, is that fine? Yes, sir. It's fine. Thank you. Any other doubts by anybody? Abhiram, you're logged into two places. Okay. Anybody, any question? I'm trying to define the scope. Let's go to the next instances. Again, the code is same. Now, what I'm doing is I'm saying print x, if you look at, then saying x is equal to a plus b. Now, this is my whole code, whole file. In this whole file, this x is a global, y is a global. I come to the function here. I'm using x. So far, x is global, it will print x. Now I'm assigning x is equal to a plus b. The moment to declare like this, x is treated as local, like previously. But we already have function assume that x is global. Now there's a confusion, should x be treated as this x, or should x be treated as new local variable there? And because of this confusion, if you were to use a global variable and then use as a local, it will give you an error. So this will not work. Sometimes that happening, this gives you local, that's the reason. This kind of code, if there's a global variable like defined it here, you, if you use it and then assign the value, Python doesn't know whether you're referring to the global x here or you are referring to the new local x here. And because of that, Python gives you error, it doesn't work. If you want to do that, you want to make sure that you want to keep x as a local or global, then you basically declare here, if they want to be global, you in the beginning you say global x. The moment to say that Python says, in the entire function of x, x is no more a local variable, x becomes a global variable, and that is what basically would do. The moment I say x is global, it will take the global value, and even this x, it knows that x is global, it becomes this, and value of x would change. So now look what would happen in execution. I said x is 10, y is 20. I call y is at 5, comma 7. I come there, a becomes 5, b becomes 7. It says global x. And x is my so far 10 because x is 10 is going to print 10. Now I'm saying x is a plus b. A is 5, b is 7. So x becomes 12. Now remember, I had said x is my global. Because x is my global. So this x and this x are the same. Because I made it global. So the moment I say x is a plus b, even this x becomes 12, which was this. So when I say print y, it will be 12. Print x, it will also be 12. 
So if you want to make use a global variable and modify that variable inside a function, declare that as a global. If you don't declare a variable as global, it is always treated as local and whatever you make changes there, it will remain there. And that's the point I'm trying to basically highlight. Want to do run the code? I can probably run the code and show it to you. So let's go there. I would say, let's say global x. I can say print x, return x, and then let me run this code here. Are we clear what you're doing in this code? I'm making X as a global. So X was 10. It is global here. Print X will print 10. This is what really has happened here. When I call the function at 57, function is called. Because I'm printing X, X is global. The global value is taken and printed 10. When I say, now returning, I'm returning X, which is 12. So this returns 12 my y becomes 12. But since x is my global, x also becomes 12. When I suprint y, x, both becomes 12. When I call y is equal to at 100, 200, a becomes 100, b becomes 200, global x is what we find. Print x, x here is 12 still. So this print x is 12. But when the function returns, y becomes 300 because the return value is 300, it prints 300. So when you use the functions, make sure you understand global and local. And if you don't use them judiciously, your program is going to become a mess. And this you need to understand. So this five examples doing score one to score five, I try to declare that part. And lastly, I could basically say conflict, which is what I said here. You look at here, I global x, print x is fine. This could be de defined, x is declared as global. So if you have a conflict, always declare it. Otherwise, you could be in trouble there. That's the point I'm basically trying to make. Any questions anyone would like to ask, or I should be done? Reset. Krishna, any questions? Let me know. No question. Okay. No, sir. No, no sir. sir. Yeah. So I'll move to uh, this thing. Another thing called function called default parameters. It's something called keyword arguments. Look, I had defined parameter Z, parameter W, and I'm saying if this third parameter is not passed, use the value as three. That means value of default. Well, if you if when you invoke the function. If Z is not specified, value of Z to be taken as 3. If it is specified, use that value. This is what's called a default value. Similarly, if W is not given, use the default value of W as 4. So now look at the example, you understand. I'm saying s is equal to add 1, 2, 3, 4. That means x becomes 1, y becomes 2, 4. So my x becomes 1 is 1, y becomes 2, it becomes 2 here. I am passing 3, so z becomes 3, 
and I'm passing 4, W becomes 4. If I, and things will happen there. If I were to invoke this function, add 1, 2, 3. So let's say I were to do this, assuming the code was x plus y plus z plus w, I missed adding it. And so this is what it is turning at, adding all the four variables. x plus y plus z plus w. Now I invoke 1, 2, 3. When I invoke 1, 2, 3, this one, x becomes 1, first parameter. This one, 2. Y becomes 2, second parameter. I'm passing 3. Z becomes 3. And look, I haven't passed the fourth parameter. There is no fourth parameter here. Whereas in the function, I have declared four parameter. So normally I expect four parameters to pass, but I'm passing only three. And I pass only three. Python says W has not been passed. So we'll take, oh sorry, assuming X plus Y plus Z plus W. So value of W would be taken as four if it is not passed. And that's the meaning of what we call is default parameter. If I invoke the function add one comma two, When I invoke the function 1, 2, x takes the value 1, y takes the value 2, but this function, we have defined z plus w. I haven't passed the value of z here, I haven't passed the value of w here, so it takes value of 3 and value of 4, so it will return 1 plus 2 plus 3 for 4. So essentially what you are saying is, if you declare a parameter like z is equal to 3 or w is equal to 4, that basically means you are defining the default value. If these parameters are not passed, the default value will be taken. If you pass the value, those values would be taken. Now, but the moment you do these definitions, there are certain restrictions. All such default parameter which you define always has to be come at the end. I cannot say add define. I cannot say def add x is equal to 3, then y, then z is equal to 10. So all these default value declarations should always be declared at the end and not in the beginning. That's the one thing you really need to make a note. Secondly, you can also pass them to so these two parameters x and y has to be passed in the same order. But these default parameters, which are declared default value, I can pass them in any order by their name. I can say w is equal to four. So w becomes four, and that will take as default value. Let me correct this, otherwise we'll, I'll keep writing it again and again. Just give me a minute, let me correct it. Okay, so I can pass, I'm passing in different order. W has been declared at the fourth parameter. Z has been declared as the third parameter, but I can work with their name, W as name, which is fine. But if I don't use the name, then order would be maintained if I use the name, but I cannot pass this name parameter first and then the default parameter, the initial so these are called, what I'm referring to them as initial parameters. These are called positional parameters. And these are called keyword arguments. The difference you have to make. So, so for example, here, if you look at, when I invoke this, this is error because for Y, it, it always expects a value that X and Y has to be specified. And I haven't specified second parameter, it will give me error. But if I were to invoke 1, 3, W, 4 like this, this works fine because 1 would be X, 2 would be Y. I specified W, which is this. 
that is not specified that will be taken as three and that's the way the, the positional parameters which are the initial ones always has to be passed the keyword arguments can be passed by their name in any order or they can be passed as it is like in this case and they would work fine that's the way so it's good to define with keyword arguments you can define all of them to be keyword arguments that could be fine after that defined as add x is equal to 1 y is equal to 2 z is equal to 3 w is equal to 4 you could define him but don't define it and pass the functions then it will give you error because parameters to be met so these positional parameters always have to be specified if there are any other parameters which are the keyword arguments can be defined and can be passed or need not be passed if they are not passed the default value is taken that's what basically i'm trying to explain in the function so basic function parameters are tried to cover what i have not covered is what is called non-local that becomes too complicated maybe and if you're done with the whole course then later on if you remind me i can cover it but right now it will confuse you i'm not covering that so those interested can read the google it out document and get confused at the moment i'm skipping it so understand local and global and that should be fine is that okay so now I come to exercises we defined a prime number what a prime number is so what i expect is given an integer m can you find a circular prime so what you need to do is write a function called prime so write a function prime m You pass a parameter x, def, and it returns true or false, depending on if x is a prime number or not a prime number. If x is a prime number, it returns true. If x is not a prime number, it returns false. The main code is given the number 1, 1, some number. Find out if I keep rotating like 1193. If I bring 3 to the beginning, then this number becomes 3, shift left 119. Now, if I bring 9 to here, then this becomes 9, 3, 1, 1. And if I bring 1 here, this number becomes 1, 9, 3. So all these four numbers, 1193, 3119, 9311, and 1931, if all of these four numbers are the prime numbers, then such a number is called a circular prime number. So the way you need to do is first define a function prime, then find out, keep circulating it, find a new number, check it, and then see if everything is a prime to so define two functions one is prime one is function to convert the next number check it and print it if all of them is prime the given number is circular prime or not a circular prime it's a little bit tough exercise but see if you can do it i can certainly give the answer maybe after two classes but try doing it then you can see it. is question clear i know it's tough to program but is the question clear Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Try doing it. It will be tougher. But see if you can do that. Next question is, given the number n, compute all its binomial coefficient. You know what nc0 is? For example, 5c0 is 1. 5c1 is 5. 5c2 is 10. 5c3 is 10 again, 5c4 is 5, and 5c5 is 1 again. So essentially, given the number and compute, so define a function, essentially I'm saying is, define a function called def, binomial, n, k, which computes 
and CK and then you write a loop for I is equal to sorry for I in range and n is your input given you say print by norm and comma i and all you need to write is the, func the function binomial it should print out the one the simple one should be able to do that and the binomial defined as ck is defined as factorial n divided by factorial k into factorial n minus k you know what a factorial is factorial n is 1 into 2 into 3 1 into 2 into 3 up to up to up to into n simple exercise you can define that and that should be fine so this is simpler than exercise one and i hope everybody should be able to do that is the exercise clear Anoj? Yes, clear. Yes, okay. Yes, sir. The last one. Write a function that takes three arguments and return the max. Max of the three. Do not build into a list. Do not use salt and build functions as a last element. So essentially, you'd say, let's say, find max. So you'll write a function def. Max a comma b comma c. You'll basically say if a is greater than b, that you know that b is not the max. Now max will lie between a and c. Then you say if a is greater than c, then you return a because a is larger than everybody else. You say return c. Because C is greater than A and A is greater than B. But if A is less than B, you do the same thing again. And that's what this function is. So function max, which takes three arguments and return the max of the three. Let's look at this code. Simple way to do that. So again, this should be a simpler one to finding a max. This is a little tougher one, which basically is write a function that take list as the arguments. So let's say my list is equal to 2, comma 3, comma 5, comma 6, comma 2, comma 4. Now see in this list, 2 is appearing twice. So your job is, I'd say unique, so I'll define def unique some list. And so return me L, which is basically it should expect to return 2, comma 3, comma 5, comma 6, comma 4, any duplicate element it should remove and do that. And that is what we need to basically do. So iterate over the list, see when a number is duplicate, remove that, and then proceed. And you basically get that is there. Again, you can start from list element in this. If you see element is there, remove that element and continue further. That I need to do. That is a simple function. I can give efficient way or I can give you non-efficient way, but try doing it. So that's all I have for basically today's. And next lecture, we'll try to, okay, another one. This is good. Those is for those who want to venture out further, want to do more work. Define a perfect number. Find the perfect number less than n. For example, Perfect number are those who, if you add the factors, it becomes equal to that. For example, 6. 6 has factors as 1, 2, 3. If you add them, this becomes 6. Look at 28. 28 has a factor 1, 2, 4, 7, 14. If you add them up, it becomes 28. Next perfect number is 3 digit, which somewhere would be, I think, 496 or 480, something of that kind. Next perfect number is a 4 digit. They keep growing. So this is optional, try doing it, that should be fine. And I am done. Any questions, let me know. Otherwise, I'll stop it here. And tomorrow's class, I'll get into I.O. How to read from a file, how to do standard I.O. Look at that part. 
If no questions, I'll terminate. Try to improve exercises. I'll also try sending exercises previously, which I had done. I'll keep sending maybe two lectures away. So maybe tomorrow I'll send you the, exercise, the answers for lecture four, but try to do it yourself. Okay? Thank you then. Any question, feel free to ask me. I'll terminate.